Hi everyone. <laughs> uh, I'm AWAC. I'm Gamma Dev. Um, and uh, it it's been a while. Uh, it's been eight or nine months since our last video. Um, that's my fault. Uh, but um, uh, one of the things that uh, so sort of reminded me of this is uh, there was a, I can't remember the name of the uh, the uh, podcast guys who uh, covered. Uh, killing time recently. Mike and uh, somebody, but I, I don't know if it's the angry video game nerd or whatever. Yeah, and they cover and they covered uh, Killing Time recently, and then as a consequence of that, YouTube's suggested video thing said you might also want to check out uh, Anyway and Gamma Devs Let's Play slash Drown Out of Killing Time, and so as a consequence, we got like well for us a huge number of subscribes. Um, uh, to to the channel, so I thought, well, I'd, I'd better get off my bottom, hadn't I? Uh, uh, but I'd also particularly like to thank uh, the existing subscribers who have stuck with us all this time. Uh, so, and what we're doing today is Brain Dead 13, which uh, is um, in the style of Dragon's Lair. You and would almost other. think this was a Don Bluth uh, production, wouldn't I, you? I thought so. Uh, the the art style and animation style certainly looks like Bluth. Something well, this is by ReadySoft, who has basically made their career out of porting Don Bluth's uh, Laserdisc games to home consoles. or ah. Particularly the Amiga was the first one where they could kind of almost do something that if you squinted and you had 13 floppy disks and, yeah. and you swap between you could almost imagine you were playing the real thing yeah i remember that and time went on technology got better and you know the, thanks to cd-rom technology and things like the 3do they were able to get a fairly good approximation of the old laser disc games mm -hmm. and also you know cdi with a wonderful mpeg cartridge <sighs> yeah so after they exhausted all the Don Bluth games because they mm -hmm. there weren't that many of Dragon's them. Lair, yeah, Space Ace. Now this thing has a demo for or a video at least of coming soon Dragon's Lair two, but I don't think Dragon's Lair two was ever released for the three DO. I don't remember seeing it. Yeah. Um and I don't think it would have done well because Dragon's Lair True, even in its an original form, was extremely difficult to play. Yes. I actually have a laser disc of Dragon's Lair two. Oh. And I've actually played it. Uh -huh. On from a laser disc uh, uh -huh. using Daphne, and then later Daphne, Daphne is Daphne is a laser disc emulator, oh. obviously named after Daphne from Dragon's Lair. You know? Okay, yeah. yeah. And so originally you had to have a Dragon's Lair laser disc and a laser disc player that would hook up to your PC. Ooh. And it would control it. And well, I had one of these things back from college, and I mm -hmm. got the disc. And so when I have Space Ace and the original one as well. Yeah. And so I used to play this, but now since then, Daphne has, will let you use your own image or one from, like, say, a Blu-ray oh. or a DVD. Cause is this is it, is this part of the um, the the main project or is this uh, no? Separate? This is this is separate. Of okay. Laser disc games have shown up in main. I don't think they've done Dragons there because Dragons there is still actively being sold as a product. You can oh. buy a Blu-ray. Yeah, of oh. Dragon's Lair that you can play with your remote or whatever, or a PlayStation controller or any kind of controller really, because okay, Blu-ray can handle the scripting. I I think I, I don't have, well, I, actually, they're, I do run, have. they're running a whole JVM in there as far as I'm aware. Yes, but Dragon's Lair doesn't even need that much uh, sophistication for work. There's also an HD DVD version of Dragon's Lair in Spaces. So I think I have one of those. Hmm. Which yeah, I mean, basically it's very little scripting. You could do this. I mean, this is. Very simple. Mm -hmm. In fact, I'm pretty sure. Actually, the reason I originally had that laser disc player and the reason I acquired that laser disc, it's kind of funny that both me and Keith have a copy of Dragon's Lair <laughs> on laser disc, was because I bought that laser disc player when I had my Amiga. Amiga had Amiga Vision, which would oh, natively yeah. talk to laser disc players, and you could script games like Dragon's Lair. Wow! I don't or if you had a, if you had a content on any laser disc, uh -huh. which I think, you could actually script and overlay graphics and say, "Hey, want to make a Star Wars game with Star Wars in the background?" Well, you can do that with Amiga Vision. Just don't try and sell it commercially. Or right. Some will be not, some lawyer will be knocking on your door. But mm -hmm. anyway. So, yes, originally these all started off as laser disc games, but this one is unique because this was made specifically by ReadySoft for home consoles. Huh. Basically, they took their engine that they used for porting 
mm -hmm. Laserdisc to consoles. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, gee, if we knew ahead of time we were making a console, yeah. we could... Uh, be much more efficient. Much more efficient. Basically, we do this all within, like, they were either using a PC, or heck, they might have been using an Amiga, mm -hmm. know, to basically work within the limitations of what they could do and not have to cheat mm -hmm. what they normally would on from converting a Laserdisc game, just do it within the console constraints and they get something that looks incredibly smooth. As you can see, this looks like a... It is surprisingly smooth. I mean, it's much smoother than I would expect from your average Cinepak. Uh, well, because it's not Cinepak. Because uh -huh. their engine was... They didn't. They generally did not use Cinepak, if I remember. They would actually extract the backgrounds from the Laserdisc. Right. From the video source. They didn't yeah. They didn't have access to Blue's original artwork. Uh. And then they would hand draw, trace back over the, the cell art. Mm -hmm. So... That was somewhat tedious. Versus like. versus like, why don't we just make the backgrounds explicitly for like how much we can hold in memory at one time? Mm -hmm. Overlay the cell animation on top of that. Because great thing about this type of cell animation, it compresses really well. <laughs> yeah, if you know it's starting off as cell work and you don't because right this, there there were times I, I think I've seen a making of ready soft like the first version of Dragon's Lair they for home consoles, mm -hmm. and they're going through and they're basically painting out video noise going that's killing the compression stuff get these mm -hmm. stray pixels out of the way you know? mm -hmm. get these to a nice flood fill algorithm or whatever so like the just 16 po colors yeah, posterize it that'll yeah. do it yeah. yeah like you know turn this into the 16 color sprites or, or whatever mm -hmm. we can handle so yeah so that's kind of the genesis of this they said let's make an original game mm -hmm. in the style of Don Bluth I would not be shocked if there weren't some former you Bluth know, animators that worked on this uh -huh. And you know it has that. They at the time they didn't they did not call it Don Blue style because you know, probably scared. <laughs> um, but they I think they did call it Warner Brothers style. Uh huh. I guess I guess the time they weren't scared. And so here we're seeing like some of the scenes from the game, kind of just going through its little thing. And actually, if you look at later like the demos on here for like Dragon's Lair and Space Age, you can kind of see like how it doesn't look as clean as this because like I said mm -hmm. they had to go. They were doing NTSC video work. source and yeah. trying to extract the background and, mm -hmm. and then, like repaint it and all that. So the other thing is this also you can tell this is a video game because it's it, it's very nonlinear. Mm -hmm. You can attack stuff in different order. You know, it's like oh I'm going to go this part of the castle first and right. attach this. So here let's do like a new game. And this is actually somewhat topical because Don Bluth just finished a successful Kickstarter. Actually, it was a... Uh, or Indiegogo. Indiegogo, well, yes. He had an unsuccessful Kickstarter. Right. And they wouldn't let him keep the money, whereas on Indiegogo, yeah. apparently, they do let you keep the money. Well, he also revised it. Because yeah. a Kickstarter, he said, I want 550000 Right. To create a demo. Yes. Yes. A movie pitch for yeah. a Dragon's Lair movie. Mm-hmm. And so an Indiegogo, he only shot for 250000 but at the end of the Indiegogo, so here's like a bit of non or anything. So at, oh, I guess I didn't. That, that, was, a, that was an actual uh, motion point. One thing which differs from the Bluth games, none of them, it's I, I find it they don't have the flashes of light that tell you where it's Right. Really. I find it interesting. Uh, today, it is it is called, it is known as a quick time event. Yes. But it originated in Dragon's Lair. Yep. So it should be called a Dragon's Lair event. Well... Well, they weren't, they weren't talking about QuickTime in terms of, like, like Apple technology QuickTime. I think mm -hmm. they, I think Sega came up with that term for oh. Shenmue. Oh. Where they would flash something on the screen. I don't get it. I'm pushing the button here. Really? I don't know if i got to push a button or I go a direction. I think you a direction. I did push a direction. Oh, really? Which direction did you push? I tried two different ones so far. Oh, all right. So let's see what's going on. I thought maybe do I have to do a direction plus a button press maybe i should have read the direction but <laughs> i know the box for this is is kept someplace separate uh -huh. because i remember distinctly that this is actually one of the since this is one of the later titles it's actually somewhat high in price already it's probably going to go up oh. also since it's a multi-disc game wow. so here i did you're pushing, uh, looks like left over there. Yeah, because yeah. I thought he's got a three way intersection. Uh -huh. and Fritz is, I don't want to go back towards Fritz there. I want to go. Okay. It doesn't look like there's any lives, which um, makes me happy. Oh, I think there are lives. Really? Yeah. So let me try down this time. Yes, they definitely have the Warner Brothers sound so effect. It's kind, of, it's kind of funny that 
Bluth did Indiegogo. He's, he was shooting for 250000 mm -hmm. Okay, I tried down. He did nothing. Okay, I left, tried, he did nothing. I tried down with a button press, and he did nothing. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know how to advise you. Hmm. I I played this at one point. Mm -hmm. This is see. This is the old days. They there was no tutorials. No. You had to read the manual. Yep. And actually, <laughs> the printed piece of paper in the box. There was no PDF. The other possibility is up. I grief. I am plugged in. No, you are <laughs> you're plugged in. Let me check. But yes, I am plugged in because All I. Plugged in. Yes. Yeah. I mean, we were having a technical difficulty before with uh, yes, uh, Gex. We were we were we were a plan we were hoping to do Gex, but um, the disc wouldn't boot uh, for reasons that we yeah, do not we understand. I'm just going to try a button press down and see what happens. Okay, that's not it. Okay. Alrighty. Do I have to... Maybe... It's I... a, this is a little annoying that you have to keep going through this uh, same bit every time. Oh. Alright, it's... Okay, I thought maybe we'll give you something. Else. Do I have to... Either I'm doing too much. I took a brief look at this on YouTube, and most of the button presses were directions. Okay, I can go with that. But I don't so know either if, I'm, I don't know so if it's time. It's possible that it's also when he looks to the left or something. Wow. So either it's I'm doing it too late, or it doesn't like the fact that I'm hit, hitting it multiple times and it's registering that as a. Huh. See, that is, so they did not take one thing on Dragon's Day, which was, Dragon's Day would give you an audio cue of like, bonk, 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 yeah. beep, when yes. it was registering a move, so. Mm -hmm. So let's see, he looks left and right. What if I do nothing? Am I going too early? Is that the problem? Okay, okay nope. that's not it. So doing nothing doesn't help. Well, I thought maybe it was like I have to wait for, you know, him to ah. give me a visual indication. It's kind of funny that Don Blue got almost as much as he went for on Kickstarter by asking for half as much on the go go. He got $525,000 out of $550,000. Huh, interesting. So he was shooting for two fifty. dollars right. he got five twenty five. dollars Huh, interesting. So he's basically going to be able to do almost the entire full pitch that he originally wanted to do anyway. That he had budgeted for, so. Doing. Hmm. Well, I heard, I heard a ding. I, you, I heard. Well, I heard a thung, you know, like a, a breaking violin string or something. Um, do I have to hold down? Do I have to like do multiple things? I don't know. The other big crowdfunding thing uh, from so from late last year. Um, is uh, yeah. they're rebooting Mystery Science Theater 3000. Yeah, well, well. <laughs> uh, which I, I uh, threw some money in the pot for that. Yep. Um, he his his um, low goal was 2.2 million to produce three episodes, uh, but for each additional 1.1 million dollars, he would add three set. I think I think it's how it worked. Anyway, and so he said for 5.5 million, we'll do a complete season of 12. Um, he ended up with six point something million. Um, and so he's going to do a Christmas special and an extra two episodes. Uh, so he basically he basically blew past all his uh, goals, and uh, they are now the most the biggest funded um, media uh, project on Kickstarter, uh, beating out um, uh, Veronica Mars. Okay, I've got to look at I've got to look up the controls of this because this is game. Yeah. <laughs> I feel so bad about this because like, this is one of my pet peeves on YouTube videos is people who don't read the directions. And Brandon. Part of me thinks like I need to press a button or something. We listen carefully. 
So like, here's a dunk dunk dunk. Yes. Of which maybe that's their version of you doing something wrong. Things are doing direction. Manual. The manual. Here's a translated uh, PDF that is looking completely wrong. Pause it, stop the game controls. Start, stop. Use the directional pad to control the movement directions you will require are up, down, left, and right. Gee, thanks. Use the B button for an action rather than a direction, such as jumping, throwing. So maybe it's, you have to push B to have him fly over your head. I don't know. Because he comes sailing in. You control Lance's reactions to the events that happen around you. As you watch the animation, you must decide which direction Lance should move and when. Timing is very critical. And often you may make a correct move at the wrong time. Many scenes require more than one move. Oh, the good beep. Higher tone lets you know that your move has been accepted. Okay, so that was B? No, that was up. Okay. You have an unlimited number of lives in Brain Dead 13, and you probably need them all. <laughs> I, I, like I said, I remember playing this, and I remember not having this much difficulty. Uh huh. <laughs> okay, so this says B is. I, that's my guess. Nope. No, oh, that wasn't it. So, so we've tried all four directions and B. I honestly have not tried going back towards him because, well, who knows? Mm -hmm. Well, you haven't tried right. To pause the game, blah, blah, blah. Nice. Timing is critical, huh? So you tried right there. Yep. All right. So we're out of ideas. Left, right. What the hell? Left, right. Be ready for an action rather than directions such as jumping, throwing. You can short lanes. the good beep. Do I have to hold down? I'm uh, looking at this up here. Story. Baseball hallway. Do I have name details? As usually, it's name also known. Oh. oh, that's not very helpful. Baseball hallway. Left to skull hallway two. Right to conservatory. Up to moose. Oh, this is in alphabetical order. Oh! What'd you push? Immediately I did left. I want the... Is this thing in game mode? Is your TV in game mode? <laughs> oh, are you worried about delays? Yeah. Um, it should be in a very low latency mode. Oh, okay. It should be in game mode. Okay, I have no idea. <laughs> okay. No idea what's going on. This may be why I didn't play it much when it first came out. <laughs> okay, which which one was that you were trying it? So the other one's like I, I pressed what I would consider to be decently early. Mm hmm And I actually pressed Goodness gracious. It's also possible that it's like it's lo it's also locks you out after you make your first mistake. Yeah. Is 
So, I mean, that does not look like there's many places I can go there. No, and my guesses would be up and or right. Or you could push, or maybe B to duck him as he comes flying out. Since there's, I mean, there's no indication of what. So I wonder if wait, the wait flash... Until, wait oh. until you get to the landing. Okay. And then try up. Oh, okay. Oh, that sounds right. Oh, whatever you pushed was right. Mm, I'm that's, not evil. That's not something for my nightmares. Okay, I guess I was supposed to uh, avoid that somehow. You can use the sword button, I don't know. Okay, so B button will have to. Alright. Right there. Well, I didn't hear anything. I didn't hear any response whatsoever. Left. Oh, so well, left, right. right. Good, two good guesses in a row there. They could have made that shorter. Hmm. I thought, see, it sounded to me like we had it in time, but... See, well, let's see. <laughs> yeah, these, it, yeah, this is, I, what, I played Dragon's Lair in the original arcade and Space Ace. Space Ace was much harder because the timing was much narrower and fiddlier. Um, and, well, and the reason they did that is so that you would put more quarters in. I can't imagine why they made this so... Yeah. Well, there's no quarters involved, so we'll just, like, you know, because no one will get sick of this animation right here. <laughs> so, so you want to say how much you spent on the Mystery Science Theater Kickstarter? No, I don't. <laughs> it's just, um, it was basically enough to, to get us uh, some, some special goodies. Uh -huh. Um including um so they're they're so they're having they're having two premieres one in new york and one in la um and so we can we can go to the one in la okay and by we i mean uh my sweetie and i we, we kind of went in together on it okay so that's not it so it's left right and then something else i thought it'd be left again but either i got the timing wrong or i guess wrong or it should be, maybe be down or up or maybe it could be it could be b which is duck Okay, and this will be trial and error. Okay, so that's like, yep. Also, I actually some of these I'm over, I do remember this scene from when I played it before. Yep. So I kicked him once, and then uh, okay. And then I, we, I remember this one being I remember this one being quite the little bastard. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember which way. Yeah, I, no, I saw this scene on YouTube. So I can't remember which way you end up going at the end. So what was that unsuccessful? I'm gonna go to the left. Okay. I I thought maybe hit B again or something, but maybe I got the timing. I don't know. I kicked him once, and he seemed to be stunned by that. And mm -hmm. then... Leave leave the way you came. I tried that. that no. I thought maybe kick him again, but no. So we try to left again with that one. Mm -hmm. Is this the music room? Well, yeah, it's playing the Nutcracker Suite. And... Ah, okay. Maybe down, maybe right, and... No. What? It's up. 
Really? Yeah. Hmm. I've, I've loaded up a walkthrough. I kind of was thought, yeah, I was kind of, except then it doesn't look like enough there, Eventually, yeah, it's just like, well, I've tried left and right, like, twice, and it's not, I may as well try up now. That makes no sense. Oh, up the string, how quaint. Oh, I took too long and Fritz got me. Oh, okay. Because, you know, that's what Fritz, Fritz does. Uh, this, yeah. He's kind of omnipresent. <laughs> Certainly knows his way around the place. Oh, sure, I Oh, I see. I wrap the strings up so they form a ruler. Fritz is basically the ticking clock. What? I... They want you to make that decision before he basically even enters the room. Huh, interesting. What was that? Well, we'll see in a moment. Okay. Means a jump instead of a, a direction. In, maybe? It, whoa! Oh, hey, it's a new resin. Let's turn your head around again. As you know, if the hat was in your way, why it's are you jumping? But I think it might be. Guess not. I'm trying to figure out. So, what would this be called? Well, you know, he's got to turn his hat around because he's got attitude. He's got tude. Well, that down's not correct. Conservatory, conservatory. Entrance, fireplace, giant bug. It's almost like it's uh, picking so now showing hallway. So is this now showing? What? No, that's not it. Okay, yes, the most counterintuitive direction was the one. Oh, to go right. Oh, to grab the. Uh... Wait, what? Who was that? I don't know. I was I was looking elsewhere at that moment. <laughs> I mean, literally, duck. I yep. See down. You think that would be the most uh, logical one? Mm -hmm. But uh, no. Or maybe B. Yeah, that would be my uh, the action button. Yep. I got duck again. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Seven forbid you do the same move. Dodge to the side, dodge to the right. Seven forbid you do the same move. Yeah. So I'm guessing this is Frankenstein, the the jock, the frat Frank. Or okay. So what was that attempt? Uh, ducking again with the B button oh, okay. it does not work. <laughs> All right. Hang on. Yeah, we are totally. <laughs> so let's let's see what would be the most counterintuitive mood here. It'd probably be to go towards him, which would be to the right. So let's try that. Nope. Uh -huh. Maybe down, I guess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Statue hallway, start hallway, staircase, skull hallway. Oh, look at it. Yeah. Right. Cat 
to pie. Okay, down. That's about it. Alright, so I guess left or up? <laughs> Is there one's left? Sub bosses. Oh. Moose, BBs, moose. It's gotta be moose because he has a big M on his thing, so. The, what was the first thing you did? Uh, up. Oh, so you jumped. Yeah. Come on. So, say what you will. By the second game, by space. Oh, shit. Sure. And I missed, <laughs> I missed the debut button. Yeah, yeah, gotta pay attention. The second one of. Uh, by Space Age, these mm -hmm. have pretty much gotten the rules down. Of yeah, this. yeah. Like, well, space Age like, had little blinky bits, yeah, too. It, yeah, Space Space. But see, I was saying. Space Ace always had blinky bits for everything, versus Dragon Slayer mm -hmm. was kind of hit or miss whether they did that or not. They hadn't established the rules yet. So, mm -hmm. they did that, and then by the time they got Dragon Slayer 2, which was... Okay, down's not it. Mm -hmm. Let me guess, uh, maybe B again, I guess. Um, they were incredibly fair, yeah, they put a lot more moves in, but they also were incredibly fair, but, like, you know, well... Yeah. I guess, I'm like, like I said, the most counterintuitive move right is going to go to the right. Uh -huh. So I'm guessing that's what it is because I tried B, I tried up, I tried down, I tried left. So oh, it's got to right. be that. Yeah, that's the process of elimination. It's got to, like I said, most, whatever the most counterintuitive move is, usually seems to be the one. Mm -hmm. Like, why would you do that? Why? Why? <laughs> This is like somebody. That... Yep. Oh, hello. Okay, maybe that time counterintuitive would have been. <laughs> the intuitive one would have been to go down or. Mm -hmm. So I did up and I did right. And it. Okay, so. Oh, okay, so they're not making us go through the thing. Okay, down. Nope. Maybe I gotta go. And the right. first time you went right? Oh, yeah. Okay. So you get the V bucks? So, okay. So I did left, right, and thought, okay, I need to repeat that sequence because he's hit, lining up the same uh -huh. way again. Nope. <laughs> No, you did that one already. Yes, exactly. It's like, why would you do the same thing to the same action before? I don't know. That's <laughs> uh, just dumb. Nope. So, what was that? What was that attempt? That attempt was B. Oh, okay. So, so clearly it must be up. up. Yes, of course. <laughs> Yep. Up. Of course. Oh. Because now you can climb it. Oh. Well, I'm out of the castle. I got one move in there. Yeah, you did. I d so what was the first thing? Down, I guess. Or go left to jump off it? Because I heard a beep when the first time yeah. I did this. So let's see. The least logical move there would be up, I'm guessing, or right. So let's mm -hmm. do up or right. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, you reverse psychology, yes. Nope. 
None of those uh, sounded right. So we'll up, I guess. <laughs> Kill him. Could he be? I don't know. What would be do at this point? He doesn't. Have, see, he doesn't have a sword or a gun, so it's like well, hard to figure out what. Well, what the first time you got up there, you did something, and I heard a positive noise. And I thought, yes. But then, but then we dropped it. So I'm wondering what that was. I thought I did down. Huh. But. Unless there was yeah, a compound move in there. Right? And... I think doing left would be riveting, good. riveting uh, gameplay here. I don't know. See, it's like, <laughs> you know, hey, we start off with Gex. Not my fault that Crystal Dynamics <laughs> has issues. So, yeah, so. it's yeah. So yeah, we put in the Gex disc, and the first thing it said, "Oh, I don't have enough uh, memory for saving games." And, and you know, my thought was, "We're not going to save games. Why are you even bothering?" Well, there's something the PlayStation got right. It's just like, "Oh, you can't save games, or you don't have the same cartridge." You just kind of go. I don't care. <laughs> See, I did down there. I didn't hear a beep. Uh -huh. Well, there. I was talking too much. Yeah. Um. See, up would make maybe sounds there. I'm going to try the left maybe there. I thought yeah. I did left before. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And, um, and then so we... So the Crystal Dynamic startup thing launched their own um, NVRAM editor. And it locked up. No, didn't hear any didn't hear any happiness there. So we we have we're playing this off an FC10, so we just took the disc out and then booted it up and used the FC10's built-in NVRAM editor and deleted a couple of things. Uh, after that, it took us to the um, I guess you might say the copyright page, but then after that, it just sort of like sat there thinking really hard about something we couldn't couldn't figure out what it was. So here we are at Brain Dead 13. So it's not definitely not up. I don't know where it's going. So, that, see, it would be like, just jump down. Just, <laughs> yeah. I, that would be way too simple. Hey, looking for me, Stitch Lips? Well, yeah. Definitely not down, definitely not up. He's a sub boss. Moose? It's Moose. It's yeah. gotta be Moose. He's got a big elbow. Except uh, looking at the the instructions of what to do, it, it doesn't look right. Because you're, in the walkthrough that I'm looking at, the first move they say is to press right, which isn't correct. You have to press B. Character from uh, Mortal Kombat. It pulls your spine out. Ooh. Well, no, the sub boss is. Hey, looking for me, Stitch Lips. Well, yeah. <laughs> so, what are you attempting right here? Trying anything, that's not working. Right? Uh, B squeeze his eyes. I don't know. Well, B got me on, got me off the thing. I thought. I was oh, saying, really? Yeah. I heard a happy. Oh, okay. Hey, friends. Hey, I get 
Oh, I think you're steering him now. Yep. <laughs> okay, where does, it, where does it put us now? I think it... Yep. I heard a I heard a happy noise. I did hear one too. Maybe we're supposed to jump off and let him electrocute himself. Uh, could be. So the last time you had a successful thing, you were pushing B or no? All right. Hmm. Nope. Think, now, see, that's a different that's a different death than the first one where you turned to ash. So. Were you doing up and down? Okay. I think that makes sense. You're sort of like dodging the... Uh... Well, yeah. I know ahead of time what's it's coming up. So. Oh. Well, you will after you do this enough times. <laughs> yeah, well. That's a long sequence. <laughs> yeah. I got lucky there, <laughs> but I don't know how I'm going to get oh, this thing I would just also just like, why don't I just jump off the guy and let him electrocute himself? Okay. Because he's going to electrocute himself. It looks like down, oh, take down, up, up, down, down, left, right, up, left. Down. Up. Up. Down. Down. Did you say left was in here somewhere? Um, left was the next move. So it's, so it's, um, yeah, it's down, up, up, down, down, left. If I'm reading this correctly. At least as far as this is concerned. Doesn't make much sense there. Well, yeah, up, up, down, down, and then, I'm, and then according to this, left, right, up, left. Okay. But uh, maybe it's a timing. It thing. looks like he's make, trying to make a turn at some point. Alright. Alright, there's this sort of a turn shape there. Turn shape there. Maybe it's maybe it's up again, unless you've already tried that. 
Now that's more of a turn than it was before. Hmm. See, think there's any clues in the animation. Ooh. Of course, you're also assuming the walkthrough is correct. Yeah, uh, well, I, uh, I am making that assumption, yes. I could print anything. Nobody has this game. To me, that looks more like a right. Because I've tried up, I've tried left, I've tried down. Okay. I think it's got to be right for... Right or B. It's all that's left, really. And also, I don't know if they changed the moves from version to version. It's released on oh, multiple platforms. Oh, wait. It, do, they have, they, it, do they have a left to right flip on this? Like they did in Dragon's Lair, they would show you, like... like um, yes. Yes. Yeah, so, like, here's here's the falling platform. No. Lift fight. There it is. Mirror think, flipped the other way. Same I one. I don't think they're bothered with that because that would be like weird. Um. <laughs> yeah, because if it's mirror flipped, up and down would still be the same. Whoa. Whoa. Yep, right. Right. Okay. What ah. was it? So I did. It was right. Okay, and then you did left. So yeah. I'm, so it's sure looking like a mirror flip. Well, because um, well. this says this says up up down down left right. You did up up down down right left. Mm -hmm. So after doing the right left, then you do up. This says left, so then after the up, it's like left, so that's going to take the right. So let's see here. So there's your first down. There's your second down. Okay, right. And left. And it says up. And then right, I would guess. Hmm. Hmm, right? Is that what you did? No. Okay. I didn't do anything. Oh, um, uh, I'm guessing right. Because You're this basing says, it on a mirror. Yeah, I'm basing right? it on a mirror. I'm, bas I'm assuming this is a mirror image of what the walkthrough describes. No, so You're, you're the assuming walk it's a mirror. The walkthrough says left. That's left. Okay. Well, that's a different scene, though. This is the starting of a different scene. Oh. So if this is left, and then what? Is it huh? This is left to start hallway, or right up, left, right, right to start baseball hallway. So it's... Huh. Clearly not reading this walkthrough very well, or it's just I'm making assumptions about. Is this the friggin' Jaguar CD version? No. Which is different because it's uh, they squeeze onto one disc for the oh. Jaguar CD. Two left. What? You... Later, man. Oh, okay. Back to the hallway. Awesome. And again, I immediately went in direction there, and, mm, and it Jesus, didn't hear you. He just nuked me. Huh. He just eviscerated me. What the wow. Lag man, lag. Man. Oh, I don't know. Well, that should have been valid. You're back in the fireplace room where you came out. That's like a cigarette trick. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Ah, oh, the days are done. So again, going back towards him. So you can't go to that room that really, really. Oh, not this. Sh no, not again. Seriously. I think it was up last time, wasn't it? Once you hit the I landing. Think, I think it was right, but I remember he's still moved me because I don't think I did it fast enough. I think it's too easy. Now I'm kind of stuck. Can I go back to the way? Evidently not. I don't want to repeat that damn section again. Why? Why? <laughs> Which direction are you in? I thought I was doing right immediately. Just yeah. to be good. Is this the same no. thing every time? <laughs> oh! <laughs> no, okay. So I have to move quick. Okay, okay, so what's the least logical direction there? Left? Yeah, or, so or let's the try button. that. <laughs> so if you try right, right and doesn't down. work. Right doesn't work. Okay. So we know left must work. Down? Maybe up? See, uh, down, again, jump, yeah. down would be the most logical. Uh, right okay. or down would be the most logical. So it's got to be left or up. <laughs> <sighs> Another quarter. Remember the 80s when kids used to dress like that? No. Nope. So it's got to be down. So it's got to be a B or it's like... Yeah. Theoretically, you should not see one of the things more than... Casper the jerky ghost. <laughs> <laughs> so... Oh, um, well, it's not Casper, I don't think. Oh, pretty good. Oh, it's the librarian. Hmm. The librarian. Oh, no. Okay. We saw the first disc. I the actually, did. Oh, no. Oh, Lord. Okay. Library. Librarian. Down. down. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Go towards the danger. Yeah. Further down the stairs. Hey, up. Right. And that apparently is it. No, oh, uh, no. <laughs> Want to imagine what's on disc two? <laughs> <laughs> Where are we here? We're yeah, we're uh, we're just a little bit shy of an hour. Okay. <laughs> hey, I, we, we were gonna do Gex. We were gonna do Gex, but then we were uh, gonna do Gex. We tried to do wrong Gex. We spent some considerable time trying to get Gex to. Did it? it Is played... it possible that it because because that came out was the FC ten manufactured yet when gex came out gex came with the fc10 oh okay all right so <laughs> that's not it uh, now maybe they have multiple pressings that i've not heard of because actually when i was i was looking up this that uh i thought this would be the one with the problem because there's a note which says disc one of this has a bug on it which sometimes gets stuck and uh, you, if you have a later version, it says disc version 1.1 instead of... Huh. But this is the original. Most of my stuff is the original first pressing stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like, this is why we won't play the Horde, because... Uh, uh, yeah, because that one blows away your NVRAM. Right. Yeah. So, <laughs> you play the old version of the Horde, you're you're going to lose every save game you have. We'll that was... Have to, we'll yeah, that there, the, yeah, that was just Crystal Dynamics' solution. So, there was... There's, what, 32 kilobytes total? Yes. Yeah. Um, of of non-volatile RAM. And so you have to be, I mean, 
I took responsibility as the Monster Manor author to try and consume as little space as possible because um, I knew it was a shared space that was going to be used by hopefully hundreds of games. Um, Crystal Dynamics' view on this was we are going to create a, what is it, 16 kilobyte save file or oh, something like that. that. No, no. I and then I... it's just, and so, but because you couldn't move files around, bas- it was uh, basically allocate a an offset and a size within there and it basically never moved unless something else came in and shuffled things around. It didn't, it wasn't like a real file system. Well, it was, you yeah, know, but it was kind of sort of, but it, sort of a, a very old file system where basically file allocations never move and they had to be contiguous. So they would come in and say, um, I need to save 16 K bytes. Oh, you can't, there's no room. Okay. Delete something. Hmm. Try again. Um, no, you still have no room. Okay. Delete something again. And they would just delete files until they got a 16 kilobyte block. Hmm. <laughs> um, I, they, yeah. they caught hell for that. Oh, I thought, I, I thought, they okay, that's better than I thought it was that. because I thought it was literally, Upon inserting the disk saying, do you want to save your game, but just format it all in VRAM. I thought that's what... I I thought my so. understanding was that they deleted stuff until there was enough space. Because I know... I, I'm actually surprised at the time the Horde came out that people would have even used that much in VRAM at that point. They, they would have used 16 kilobytes of NVRAM. Unless it starts saying... I don't know, let's just start at the beginning saying, okay, free up from zero. Well, that I wanted all this stuff to be, so it might have deleted everything. Might have deleted the first 16K of NVRAM. Right. Because, um, you know, why should we deal with file offset or something like that? Right. I mean, yeah, so, so yeah, all all the, because if you think about it, you take like, let's say you've got like a, a, a two, a, 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 a two wide Lego brick and a four wide Lego brick, and they're separated by one brick. So you theoretically have like the space in front and the space in back, but you know you don't really have a contiguous set of space. So you've got to like, and you can't break up bricks. They all have to be this. They all have to be contiguous. So eventually, what happened is a new version of Portfolio, which was pressed on the discs, would go in and basically compact. It would basically do a um, what do they call it on Windows? Um, a defrag. It would basically defrag uh, the NVRAM every time you started up, hmm. um, which mitigated the problem significantly. But if you had an old version of the Horde and it couldn't find 16, kib, 16 kilobytes of, uh, of of space, it would just go, eh, <laughs> splat. Nice. Yeah. Um, they, so yeah, they, they uh, pressed a new version. And they're still around to this day. Yes, so they, they are. are. Making the new Tomb Raider games. Oh, so, really? Yeah. Okay. All right. The last two Tomb Raider games are done by by crystal oh, they're, they're they're owned the by gritty s- reboot types you know they're well uh, yeah um first no, actually the, the most recent the one is actually very good the other the 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 first they did the the most recent reboot mm-hmm. this one the newest one and that one was like literally it's like before she was the tomb raider uh-huh. she was this scared little girl on an island and they caught some flack for the E3, the original E3 video because it's the very beginning of the game where she's like, oh, 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 and she's being chased by guys. And uh-huh. and there's a scene in the E3 video where it's pre- pretty clear she's about to be violated yeah. by, you know, this s- swarthy yeah. Yeah. pirate type or whatever. And mm. even, I guess, and they got really hooked during the, the conference where actually I'm pretty sure somebody from Crystal Dynamics actually said the word, well, you know, She's going to be raped or something like that, uh-huh. and, and then immediately, and it was a developer who said this. It wasn't like a marketing person, and then Ooh. they immediately backpedaled on it, saying, "No, no, 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 no. It's not about that." And it's like, well, it's clear that they intend to rape her. Apparently, so I I, I followed this slightly because I was yeah. just appalled that. And also, like, because, so why are you why why is this why is why did you decide this was Lara Croft's origin story? Um, Apparently, if you let that scene play through, if you don't hit the quick time event, then the guy just decides to strangle her. Yeah. So. Which is oh, way more. Yeah, which is way better. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, well, because when they saw the video, and actually, because they put that up video a little bit before E three, before the playable section, uh-huh. and if you were just listening to it and you weren't watching it, mm-hmm. watching it is like eh, okay, but when you just listen to it, it does sound like an Eli Roth torture porn movie. Ooh. As you're just because she's just like oh. oh Oh, 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 uh-huh. oh, oh, no, oh, And scary this was bats. playing in a loop on E3. Yeah, 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 yeah so You're walking by so, saying, what the hell? And, you know, to their, the game is, is actually pretty good. It's got a crafting system. It's all about, you know, making your own arrows and all this. Mm-hmm. It's very stealth. It's kind of like Thief meets 
of uh, Metal Gear Solid meets whatever. So, mm-hmm. and now the next, the latest game is actually really, really good. They've uh, mm-hmm. now because she's more like Laura Croft that we all mm-hmm. come to know. The st- now she's strong and empowered woman, you know. Mm-hmm. Versus before, okay. it's like, well, before she was, it's like. <laughs> It's like, why couldn't she start out strong? Why does she have to start off as a total wimp and then uh, she must find her courage? And it's like, really? Is that kind of a cycle? Yeah. yeah, anyway. So, and they're almost kind of implying, it's like, well, no, she's never really, nothing really bad happens to her. It's like, oh, okay. She's uh-huh. just, yeah. Yeah, just this island full of murderous. She's just on, you know, yeah, torture porn island or whatever the hell you want to call it. But, uh, yeah. Turned left anyway. to enter Saw, turned right to enter Hostel. You yeah, know. exactly. But, uh, yeah, so they called La Flack for that, and then they immediately backed away from it. But by all accounts, I haven't played the most recent version. I think I have it downloaded, but mm-hmm. legally. Uh, <laughs> digital downloads are a wonderful thing, children. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I have I've have bought a lot of yet. stuff off of GOG.com. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's was a Name drop. So it's kind of, and there's still, Crystal is still around. They're still, I think, even in the same building they started off in, so... No, they're not. What? The building they started off in was the same building uh, NTG started off in, okay. which is um, in Palo Alto, mm. uh, near the municipal airport. Right. Um, they've relocated a couple of times since then. My understanding is they're at the same exit where 3DO used to be. The salt it, pile. It, oh, oh, they're out there. Okay. Yes. Yeah, that was... Because I, one time I was going to interview with those guys, uh-huh. and when they're described, it's like, oh yeah, it's this turn, use turn, but it's like, oh wait, I know where that is. <laughs> Seaport Drive. Yeah, out there. Okay. Well, was, unless they moved again, uh, but uh-huh. yeah, it was, I was like, oh yeah, I know that place. Uh, <laughs> it's called the Salt Pile because um, immediately behind this little, like you know, light industrial office complex is Leslie Salt Company. There's this giant salt field, and so there's this giant pile of salt that is yes, uh, constantly means, growing, constantly being turned over and growing, shipped out. shrinking, whatever. Yeah. It is. And what was that? Wasn't there something somebody had done like a was it a haiku or something about? Oh. From oh, that one wow. building, the engineering building, it's like, well, I just sit here, watch the salt pile grow or something like that. <laughs> I remember its existence. I don't remember what it was. <laughs> I think they were talking about this for the later days of 3DO where the mm-hmm. the engineering staff was getting a little, I think it was, I think it was some of it, it was annoyed because this was after the $100 million deal. Oh, boy. And... We were all pretty damn cynical at that point. Yes, because yeah, because after as actually might even after the additional what twenty five million dollar deal that they did with Panasonic. Oh, um, so it was like a hundred million. Then oh, they, they wa- get you the chips. Oh, you wanted documentation? Uh, the software. Oh, it was to give them the oh the that. system software. That's right. No, the hundred million was for the chip and chip design and mask. Well, you wanted the system software. Oh, that's something else entirely. Well, no, remember the additional work was. To get multiple Power PC cores oh, working yeah. and the Bullet well, OS and all that stuff, mm-hmm. which took was Martin like a week or something. Yeah, like something like. <laughs> oh my God, Martin was just a freaking yes. genius. But is then, he still at Microsoft? I haven't. I, followed I don't up. know. I don't know. I think he is. Awesome. I think he, he is. is. But uh, yeah. Th- wait, no, I saw him. He was at the Amiga 30th anniversary reunion. Uh huh. He's yeah. He's he's doing good. Okay. He's doing good. Well, that's great. Saw a bunch of people at the Amiga anniversary reunion. Mm. Um, uh, didn't see you. And <laughs> I don't remember what the hell was up um, that. That's actually something I like to uh, to bring up um, both to you and also to the membership, as it were. Um, yeah, the, those guys. Um, I'm thinking of expanding into old Amiga titles. What do you think? Let us know in the comments. Also, let you let us know in the comments what you think is appropriate penance for me sitting on my uh, pasty white bottom for nine months. Well, we uh, might as well continue the Atari lineage, yeah. uh, as I refer to it. Yes, because so I listen to a lot of ancient Atari podcasts, as uh-huh. in the twenty six hundred, the fifty two hundred, yeah. seven eight hundred, and every now and then I'll come across podcasts goes ah you know I. I love the history of Atari. That's why I have an ST. It's like ST is not an Atari as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> that's a that's a tray mail. Damn it, we lost the Amiga. Quick, take a month yep. and make something yep. that has no custom chips, but all off the shelf. Use parts the and, reference design. Damn it. Yeah, because like the lineage is literally it's like 2600, 5200 Atari, eight bit mm-hmm. Amiga. Was wasn't the four hundred and eight hundred in there? Well, that's, I don't that's know that Atari. My, I don't know that minor. Atari eight bit. That's why. Oh, okay, eight yeah. bit. All right. Atari 4800, yeah. 
the Amiga. Yes. The Atari Lynx. Yes. The 3DO. Yep. The two of those that have nothing to do with any Atari lineage would be the Atari ST and the Jaguar. Right. Jaguar's done by UK Flair and Atari ST was literally what can I what can I make that kind of looks like an Amiga with off the shelf parts mm-hmm. in one month? Yeah. We can buy an OS from somebody. You know. <laughs> yeah, and they did. <laughs> yeah. The gem I'm OS. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, digital research, but uh, CPM 68K was just terrible. Yeah. So, 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 but a few podcasts have finally got us like, yeah, some people would really consider the Amiga the real spiritual successor to the uh, Atari Bits. Like, it's got most of yeah. the same people working on it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, you have Jane Miner. There's a, a bunch of people who. Yes. Uh, kind of, all things like display lists and all that stuff. Yep. You're not going to see that crap on the Atari 20 or Atari ST. Nope. Um, there was. Uh, yeah, they, well, we can't do brought... graphics. Quick, throw a MIDI chip in there and call it a day. Okay. <laughs> and it wasn't even. It was a serial chip. Yeah. That's all it was. I mean, yeah. that's all MIDI oh, yeah. was is a serial protocol. Yes. What's the matter? Couldn't, and get, the, the, couldn't the, get a pokey? What's the hell? <laughs> <laughs> um, although the the one thing the MIDI ports did get them, apart from you know a uh, fairly decent following amongst uh, music uh, musicians, um, was I guess you might say cheap round robin networking. Hmm. So you could daisy chain a bunch of Atari STs Wait, together. Would that be where MIDI Maze came from, or something? Like that? Uh, Which was it a multiplayer? Yeah, the MIDI Maze. Because oh, yep. yeah. mm-hmm. yes, we got that. Yes, um, <laughs> Amiga didn't have networking for a very long time. Um, well, yeah. <laughs> this, when it, I mean, there's there were uh, Dale Luck was particularly interested in trying to get that working, but apparently there wasn't just there wasn't enough interest in it or networking uh, for what for the for the Amiga. Um, there was there, no, there was there was there was no Apple Talk. Um, there was no. Yeah, why would you want one? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, my Amiga. So, no, you just you could get. Uh, I mean, you got Ethernet cards for the Amiga. Not. Yes. Well, okay. Oh, so right. I had one. Yes, work, you could. <laughs> yes, you could get an Ethernet card for Caltech. the Amiga, yeah. but they were zarking expensive. Not right. No. no. What was it like five hundred bucks a piece? No. 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 I had one at Caltech because that's how we hooked up to the SGI workstations. Right. And, and so, I had well, one. Did at, you? Did you buy? That? And I had one at. Uh, I had one at uh, Magic Box. Right. And I had one. I at, don't think I. I don't think I paid that much for it. I had one at um, at uh, at NTG, which is how I was able to develop Monster Manor in front of an Amiga with a network connection to the Sun uh, server that yeah. had all the compilers on it. Um, so I I had almost no contact with the Mac based development tools because we because that's we used the Amiga at Caltech and when you, and it was working it was working great we to had, yeah. use the personal animation recorder right to do previews right. no, of I'm our not... stuff that we were recording. And so we would just, I would just FTP the frames over. Mm-hmm. And it was actually set up that literally that way of like, literally you could FTP the frame over and it immediately would record it onto the, the PAR. Ooh, nice. And that way, yes. So we could immediately have a, a preview of the animation, mm-hmm. even which I think looked as good as what we were getting off the beta cam recorder. Um, <laughs> it was, even though it was, it was motion JPEG or whatever. Oh which yeah. did. M, this is uh, MPEG. Whoa, 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 no. <laughs> Slow down there, sport. Uh, <laughs> motion Licensing JPEG. fees on that alone. Which, which motion JPEG? I think motion JPEG is still in use for a lot of stuff. Um, yeah, it is. Okay. But yeah, and that's that, that was basically like the first thing of like, wow, a whole digital pipeline for recording. This mm-hmm. is the future. You know? <laughs> no, we got, we got a lot of stuff And considering it costs like machine. a tenth at least that card probably got no probably like a hundredth what they spent on that beta cam recording single frame recording setup hmm. here's on some stock little uh quantum hard drive and oh. a little card that sticks in the oh. thing there no i was um again one of, the, one of the reasons i'm bringing up the amiga stuff is i actually pulled down one of my old 2500s uh, to see if, see if it still worked and see if it was something right. that uh, could be used to, to play some old games on. And hmm. I got to the boot screen and no further. Hmm. I'm not actually convinced that the quantum drive was spinning because quantum hard drives of that era had a problem with stiction hmm. where the head would stick to the platter. Apparently, I actually have this problem with my A3000, but if you whack the, the case, it'll start spinning. 
but this one wouldn't do it. Cool. I actually I was actually posted this on Facebook a while ago, and someone said, "Oh yeah, I, I fixed it by taking the drive out and giving it, you know, torquing it and then putting it back hmm. to, enough to break the the, the contact." Of course, so that's twenty five hundred. So that's a SCSI interface, right? That's correct. So Amiga was SCSI. You realize that there are like relatively dirt cheap. You probably can buy them on Amazon SCSI to basically USB things where you could just probably take an SD card, mount an image on it, and the pretend, last have it time, pretend to be. The know. last time I well, it turns out I actually have a, a PCM CIA SCSI adapter for this old thing. Well, wow. uh, that yeah. that'll work. Um, it's, and it's not a question. I the, I copied the data off the machine long ago, right. so I haven't lost anything. Um, but I was just a little disappointed that you know, eh, phooey. You know, the, the, the well, hard drives. You know, they 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 give out after about twenty years. I I I had one of... from 3DO that only was partially recovered after I yeah, took but... it out of the closet and said, "Hey, I wonder if there's still some stuff on this from 3DO." It's like, "Hey, there was." I, I but also, it. I found a lot of stuff was corrupted. It was mm. like, yeah, bummer. I, I've got a machine downstairs uh, that I'm got to do some work on, see if I can get it to come mm. back to life. Because if it if it does, then there's some old 3DO stuff on there as well. Yes, please work on it. <laughs> so yes, so yeah, we yes, could do some uh, Amiga it... games. We could see the wonders of ooh yeah. and extra half bright mode. And all <laughs> <of> those. <laughs> what games will use that? A bunch of games half... did. Uh, okay, extra half. Sierra bright did mode. on that lot there. Their games is like wow. Oh, well, they're, we're ahead of the curve. We've got sixty four colors, King's Quest thirty two uh, kind of things, or I think so. Yeah, some of the later Kings Quest did that. Mm. I was actually thinking about it. I didn't actually play a lot of games on the Amiga. Um, Imagine that. Yeah. I no, just, you're you're too busy invoking the ire of Pixar. <laughs> Uh, doing animations. We will, ha- we will have to pull that out. I guess because remember, no, yeah, no, Pix- Pixar's no. changed hands. They're now, yes, they're now, now the they're prop- owned by the nine hundred pound gorilla. They're on owned the by block. Disney. Disney doesn't care. Come on. Uh, <laughs> actually, right? No, that's that's actually not true. Pixar does not owned by Disney. They're they actually merged, so that's different. Yeah, they, they didn't they acquire are Disney now. Well, yeah. Yeah. Pixar, Lass- Pixar, walked Pixar back basically says, took hey over. Hey guys, Disney. remember me? <laughs> Pixar basically took over Disney. <laughs> basically, yeah. people didn't realize that, and, and now they also oh a Pixar Star Wars film. Mm. Oh, Pixar Lego Star Wars film. Well, they don't know Legos. Legos isn't there. Legos is not. That's how, that's how Warner's. hard would it be for Disney to negotiate that license? Very hard. Really? Same reason so? why there won't be a Roger Rabbit movie ever again. Hmm. Why? Because that was Amblin, or that? Well, that was they hit Disney at a low point. It was prior to Little Mermaid. Okay, yeah. So Disney it's still was a good film. What? Roger Rabbit. It's, it is a good film. Yeah. I'm, no, I'm saying the reason they got Disney to negotiate. Disney was was having no problem with licensing things mm-hmm. out because they thought they weren't worth. They didn't think they were worth anything. That's why I threw them on home video. They didn't think they were worth anything. Huh. And also, they wanted to work with Steven Spielberg. And mm-hmm. so they said, oh, we'll happily license. And then Warner Brothers already had a deal with Steven Spielberg. And they said, oh, yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> as long as Mickey Mouse and Bugs Bunny have exactly equal screen time, the same with Donald Duck oh, and Daffy Duck. Oh, is that why Duck. that turned out that way? And Donald Duck and Daffy Duck have the exact same amount of screen time and all that stuff like that. But no, that was this was a time when Disney was like, thought they were just going to sell off the theme parks and shut down their animation so division. This was- when did, when did Roger Rabbit came out? That came out in the late, in the mid... Right before, it was right before Little Mermaid. Because I read a book called Storming the Magic Kingdom, which was a story of how a bunch of junk bond traders almost destroyed Disney. Yeah, that's around the late 70s, yes. So, yeah, so the late 70s and early 80s. Late was 70s just, Ron Miller was still running Disney at the yes. time, and he had to step aside to Michael Eisner and Frank Wells. Right. Um, who hustled and basically, I mean, these days we think of Disney, Disney as this huge thing, but back in the 70s, they were basically considered irrelevant. Um, yep. They just made just like shoddy, shoddy stuff. Yeah. Um, and they brought it back from the dead. Um, well, yeah, well, it, they brought the the film division back and then there was the right. deal of like, they still thought the animation was, they were just going to sell off all the animation assets and just... Because they'd kicked out. There's a there's a docu there's a doc, great documentary called Waking Sleeping Beauty, mm-hmm. which is all sh- archival footage. It's very uh, oh. it's not it's none of the it's none like of the employees like talking. when they're eight millimeter cameras going around and yeah. yes, and you find out the very end of it. The person who because you're basically watching like the last day that they're in the animation building uh-huh. where they're basically being 
kicked out of their own the animators being kicked out of their own building mm-hmm. by Disney basically saying we've got to make room for you know the the marketing guys and the touchstone guys we're going to mm-hmm. move to this warehouse over in this crappy part of town <laughs> because you got you animator guys are you know you're uh-huh. your old hat you're not going to happen anymore and uh-huh. so so and then you find out at the very end the guy who is shooting it is um it's either Brad Bird or John Lasseter because hmm. you go through the first, the very first day they're going through is like, oh, here's this guy, uh, you know, he's kind, of this, he's kind of weird. His name's Tim Burton, and you know, <laughs> this is like the very first shot. <laughs> and then another, then I think you actually meet Brad Bird uh-huh. uh, at some point, and then then you find out at the end of it's like it's John Lasseter is the guy who's been shooting all this. And he's mm-hmm. the guy who basically brings, in the end, ends up bringing back 2D animation. Yeah. Um, after Disney itself had abandoned 2D animation for the second time because mm. they've done so, yeah, it's a great documentary, and it's kind of funny because, like I said, they that's why they were they were licensing their properties out. Like you know, Atari was making Disney licensed games. There was like the uh-huh. Sorcerer's Apprentice. They had done they had licensed Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs to Atari mm-hmm. to make a game, but it never came out. But they were just like, yeah, this is just a licensing thing to put on lunchboxes. We're not going to do anything more with it. And that's why Roger Rabbit came oh. about was because. They said, yep, yeah, nowadays, no way would I you ever get this a Disney sense. character and a Warner Brothers character to appear, or Disney to appear in somebody else's well, movie. Well, Warner Brothers, I mean, they, I mean, they haven't figured out what to do with no, DC No, I'm saying Disney, so. forget about Warner Brothers, yeah. saying Disney will never let their characters appear in somebody else's movie, yeah, okay. some other studio's movie now. Uh-huh. That time wasn't unheard of. Right, no, of I'm thing. saying that D- Disney would license the Lego name or the Lego concept and then do a Star Wars because I thought Lego Star Wars on uh, video game was yeah. cute as hell. Well, Lego, I believe, is a Warner Brothers property. I'm, that would make me very unhappy if that were true. But with, Certainly but, the Warner Brothers property. Yeah, I know what you mean. But, but, going, but going back to Disney, I remember a friend, this could be apocryphal. Now, the, may have just been, they, they have no problem doing it the other way. Like the, Lego, yeah. the Star Wars characters appeared in the Lego, but uh-huh. you notice no Disney characters appeared. This was before uh, the Disney deal. All right, okay. Because they had relationships. Yes. So they would, Lego is kind of a weird thing because it's kind of like parody. So they can yeah. kind of do it. But you would not see like say a, a Disney movie with Lego in it. Because that's another studio. It's either Sony or Warner Bros. owns Lego. Oh, okay. So, oh, the, owns the movie rights to Lego. Yes. Okay. All right. So it's not going to happen there. But I, see. I mean, the weirdest thing so, that Disney's done. Yeah, this is nice. Change this, please. Uh, is um, <laughs> was the whole like Kingdom Hearts thing. Oh. And that was more just kind of a thing. It's like, yeah, it's Japan. We'll do this thing, and then <laughs> it happened to be popular enough that they said, let's bring it over to the states. And it's still kind of weird. Yeah. The whole Kingdom Hearts thing. <laughs> But that's a case of that's an ortho, you know, it's like video game properties mm-hmm. mixed with Disney characters. Not the same thing as like suddenly having, uh, you know, Ariel show up next to, you know, uh, Kung Fu Panda or something. You know? <laughs> okay. They're not going to do that ever. <laughs> but, but you, <laughs> Which is essentially what Roger you, Rabbit would you're be. You're describing um, the, uh, the Disney letting go of these license deals really easy reminds, reminded me of a story that um, a former employer told me. And I don't know if it's apocryphal or true or whatever, but he basically told me that he went, I think oh, he was I working think, for... I think I know what this is. Yes. Data, <laughs> Data East or Data Soft or something like that, some game company. And he was pitching to Disney to do a video game for them. Because at that time, Disney had no tech. Uh, they had no... Uh, not Data East, probably, no data, soft. probably Data Soft. I can't remember. Because Data Soft did a lot of movie license yeah, titles I, at that point. I can't point. remember. They did like Conan, they did right. Zorro. But anyway, so he, he pitched it to them to something like... And and so the, the, apparently the Disney people had an idea of what they wanted to do. And the, so oh, they said, <laughs> oh, we'd like, uh, we'd like uh, Mickey to shoot a basket, uh, you know, like 10 times. Uh, what would it cost to, to do that? What would it cost to, to make that happen? And he, and he like noodles in his head. And he says, "Oh, that would cost about mm, ten thousand dollars." And then he went, "Oh, okay. Well, what if he shot the basket only three times?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because it's a fundamental misunderstanding. Of, well, you know. not so much because they're thinking in terms of animation. Yeah. Where it's like, oh, you know, a three minute animated sequence costs this, so therefore mm-hmm. a one minute animated sequence costs one third that. as much. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. <laughs> so not realizing it's once you make you know yeah no, once you do just, it once you can do it forever yeah yeah <laughs> it's like oh we can crank this out forever and then that's when they start making 3d movies kids because yeah. they realize we don't have to pay people to draw stuff over and over again 
No, they just have to model it. They just have to model it once, and then they can. Well, then they might have to model it again when the director doesn't like it, and then they have to relight it five times. And Mm. yeah, that's rhythm and hues. How well that worked out for them. Ah, yes. Well, anyway, thank you all so much. Thank, especially for those of you who uh, who stuck with us through this (laughs) uh, ridiculous dry spell. Um, uh, Let us know what you think. What you'd like to see again. Uh, and I'm not making any promises on when the next one's going to happen, but uh, there will be a next one, and we'll see you then. Okay.